Thank you so much. This is so exciting. It's pretty fitting that uh, this order has, you know, come up on stage because I wanted to start with you guys. And I'd love to know how this project came to be. I know you were influenced by a few projects that had come and that there was a 2017 Lord of the Flies film pitch that was going around that someone influenced you. Is that right? Well, we actually had already been working on this pitch. That was more of an oh no moment. <laughs> Which happens very frequently when you're coming up with ideas and working on pitches. You know, there's just some kind of synchronicity that tends to happen. And every once in a while, somebody will text you, you should check this out. And you're like, oh, God. And, um, you know, it, it it did feel very different. It was a, a film that they were going to do. And it was just literally Lord of the Flies, but gender swapped. But what I think struck us was we looked at the I looked at the comments because I'm always very curious what people have to say about things. And the comments were very brutal in a way that I thought was just deeply incorrect because it was like, oh, what are these girls going to do? Collaborate to death? And I was like, so you have never met a teenage girl. Good to know. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it, it actually just sort of added fuel to our fire, really, because we just thought, I think we can prove that person wrong. <laughs> and I know Melanie was the first person cast, right? Um, Melanie, what did you think when you first got the script and what made you want to be a part of it? I honestly, I just, I thought it was so well written. I just was like, this is great. I, I wished I had episode two, which is always a good sign. And I was like, oh, I'm like hooked. And there were just a couple of little things about Shauna where, you know, the scene with Tysa and the diner in the first episode where her powers kind of revealed. I was like, oh, that's interesting because she's been sort of subdued Um for most of the episode and like literally scrubbing shit stains out of underwear <laughs> and then I was like oh okay she was very powerful once and I just was really interested and then Karen was a big draw for me too because I've always wanted to work with her and then as the cast grew I just was like are you joking it's like <laughs> Christina Ricci and Juliet Lewis and it just got like better and better and Christina what about you I loved the concept. Um, I loved the way that um, these characters were not given any special special handling just because they were women. Um, and uh, and and I'm a selfish, selfish actor in person. And um, I only saw my character scene in the pilot, and was so dying to play the person that was in that scene. Like I just wanted to go home with her and find out what she did, and like you know, all that stuff. So I was really, really excited about that. And Karen, I'd love to know how you kind of got involved with Yellow Jackets. Uh, I also, I read the script a couple times and embraced how thorny and crazy and beautifully written it was. And what I loved was every single character from Shauna to Misty to Thaisa to Natalie, every single person felt like they were standing at the edge of a cliff, but I didn't understand the cliff. I didn't know how they got there or where they were going. And I think we still don't completely understand that. And that is so cool to feel like a woman does not have... The world argues Hold with me. Sound. Hold for um, sound. Hold for sound. A woman does not have a predetermined ending, and that is so, so fucking cool. (laughs) And you uh, directed the pilot, which is, you know, not only introducing us to the season, but also the series, and it includes the plane crash, right? Um, I'd love to know from everyone, kind of, except you two, because you're not in the plane crash, but you know, um, what kind of went into that? And it was there pressure to kind of rope everyone in with the pilot and that scene. There was definitely pressure. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, like the pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, because you know, like, uh, you write and then uh, kind of make the pilot without a uh, kind of a guarantee of like the season. So it can be like, like a bit of a delicate balance because you certainly want to, you know, uh, uh, kind of hook in uh, uh, kind of the audience or truthfully uh, kind of the network. 
Um, but you also, if you do a good enough job, you will have to make that season of television. So you also have to be thinking about, okay, like how are we platforming story that could be uh, kind of like captivating through an entire season and not just for a pilot. And so uh, kind of Ashley and I have like an incredibly thorough um, process that uh, people have often taken a kind of note of like throughout our entire career, almost every pitch that we ever gave, um, as soon as it was over, the first thing that we would hear was, that was really thorough, which is not really like the first thing that you want to hear. Um, because like, we're so terrified of going down a road that's not gonna work that we have to sort of like go to the end of the road first and be like, oh no, no, this is gonna work out. So in the pilot, uh, we can do this. What about Karin, what, what was it like directing that episode? You know, it, the pilot was huge. It felt really, really big and overwhelming. And there were definitely moments where I was like, underplaying my um concern that it wasn't achievable yeah, you um, seem so cool the whole I, time I, I, i'm so happy to hear that because i definitely was like this is fucking impossible but <laughs> but it it you know what it was such a great team of people and it was such a good team of people like nice people and all the actors were game and like bringing the thunder in in and not knowing i mean like christina you didn't know where misty exactly was heading but you committed to the uncanny and that's a really hard thing to do when you don't know where you're headed so it's just like so many pure actors and so that the pleasure of that just seeing actors just bring their best work made it just a lot of fun. So it, it was a great experience. Oh, I was just going to say, I remember, you know, we shot the pilot um, independent of the rest of the series and we did a table read right before we shot it. And I remember we all sat down and Bart and I went, oh my, oh my God, I hope Christina, because we knew what a big character Misty was going to be, but she has basically one scene in the pilot. And we were like, I really hope Christina's not, you know, feeling weird that she just has kind of this one scene at the end. And then, you know, you sat through the whole table read and then fucking nailed that scene at the table read. And it was... Thanks. I was so nervous. I got fired at my last table read. I so. think... You did say you know, that before like, the table oh. read. Like, no. Yeah. Like, you... Like, she stole the table read. The entire it was crazy. table read. Really I think she got, like, a standing it, ovation. I basically. got, like, chills all over my body. I was... I think I was, like... Like... I just was like, oh my God, this is crazy. But first, there was scene? a lot of fear in the room. Like, because it was just the way you said it, it was like, whoa. And then it was like, oh yeah, she's acting. It's great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really nice to hear, everybody. I feel so good about myself right now. <laughs> and Christina and Melanie, you guys never share scenes, obviously, with the younger counterparts of your characters. I know a few of you guys are over there, which is nice to see. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> It seems crazy that you guys have never shared scenes together because the resemblance, not only physically but emotionally, is so uncanny, right? Did you prep together for certain scenes? Did, what were the conversations like with your younger counterparts? Well, with Samantha and I, Samantha Hanratty over there, fantastic, amazing actress, um, we met before the season started and just had a lunch and we talked about how we saw her, what kind of conclusions we had come to separately, references we'd been given. Um, and we discussed, you know, Samantha told me how she'd be playing Misty. And then I sort of let her know how I thought the 30 years would have influenced her and what I was going to add that was that wouldn't probably be in her performance. And um, we talked a lot about that. And, and then also, you know, there were certain times in the scripts when the either the 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 present would mirror something that had ha happened in the past, and any time that happened with our character, whoever did it first would talk to the other person so that we could find a way to to definitely evoke that feeling of repetition. Melanie, what about you? I uh, Sophie and I met a few times, and we just kind of like basically wanted to make sure we were playing the same person. Like, what does she believe? How does she feel about herself? Like, it was all just very kind of um, just like fundamentals. And then I think we're both quite intuitive. We both act from a place that neither of us really understand. So we just didn't really go into very much 
that was specific and there was part of me that was like, we should have done more. <laughs> we should have done more work like in choosing things. But I just think it worked so well. And as the season went on, we were doing all the table reads on Zoom and it was just one of my favorite things because I got to watch all of these performances from these young actors who are like, it's like a masterclass every episode. And obviously these guys, but everybody knows that. But I just was like watching and just like, oh my God, every single person is so incredible. And then I could watch Sophie like on my screen and just see the way that her body language would shift when she became confrontational, when she was covering something. She has like a stillness that I don't have. Like, look at this. And I kind of stole it. Thank you. That's very sweet. But there were, there were like moments where I was like, I like that more. I like what Sophie is bringing to it. I feel like there's more power in Sophie's performance and I'm going to try to take it for myself. <laughs> and so that's like she she just influenced what I was doing so much. Ashley and Bart, who was, if anyone, was there someone who was really tricky to cast? You know, I think the trickiest part to cast was Jackie, actually. Because we knew that we did not want her to be this sort of stereotypical mean girl. You know, she wasn't Regina George. And she had to both believably be the, the sort of queen bee in the context of high school, but have this underlying insecurity and fragility and humanity that um, is a really tough balance to find. And we got a lot of auditions that were just, you know, kind of, being Regina George and we were like well that's great but then what's beneath it you know what's where is the girl who is afraid her best friend is going to leave her where's the girl who's afraid that you know her boyfriend only loves her because of what she represents and who's the girl who's going to fall apart in the wilderness when those social constructs have been taken away from her and so it, it was that was a really tough part to cast and and we definitely I think we've told this story, but I so viscerally remember because of the car sickness, we were in a scouting van, Bart and Karn and myself and our casting directors, uh, Junie and Libby, who are wonderful. They sent us, Ella had self-taped. I think she was in London at the time. And they we got an email in typical Junie fashion that was all caps, all caps and exclamation points. And it said, watch this right now. And we did. We watched it in the van and we all got car sick and we said, oh, and we my. didn't even finish it. We didn't even finish it. We, she taped three scenes and we watched like one and a half and we were like, cast her. And we're just cast like, she's the right one. Now. She's the one. Just yeah. lock it up. <laughs> Bart, do you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, uh, a gun to my head, if I had to pick one that was difficult, it would probably be that one. But they were all incredibly hard. Um, like, I think I'm going to steal what uh, you said before, Karen, about pure kind of actors because we knew that we wanted a show that was going to be able to work on like a lot of different like levels in terms of the scene and like that you wouldn't always have that much space to cover things with a kind of dialogue and like finding, you know, 800 parts of people that can play a sort of like a cub, uh, a kind of a conscious agenda, a subconscious agenda, and then like a sub subconscious agenda is all like, that's a huge ask. And it's insane that we even ask. And then it's even crazier that we found so many people who could do it. I think, I think just, you know, these two women on stage with us, the, the levels that they bring to Shauna and to Misty, because I think that both of these are parts that in the wrong hands could feel a little bit one note. You know, it could be that Shauna is just the sort of bored housewife or the repressed, you know, the person who's repressing their trauma and, and Misty could just be the psychopath. But I think that the part as I try, I can't just turn her into that. Keep making her do human things. <laughs> but I think the magic of their performances is that they, they bring so much more and there's so many and you see the cracks in the facade that they're presenting to the world. And, and that's something that they're bringing to it. You know, we, we do our best with the scripts, but they're the ones who are inhabiting these women and bringing them to life. And it's incredible to watch happen. Uh, if you ever have the opportunity, I recommend watching them work in person because it's we're just always behind the can behind the, you know, in video village being like, yeah. But honestly, <laughs> if so we good. didn't, I mean, it's all on the page is yeah. the thing we have. We have I mean, to, to get to start at this place and just like add stuff and not add stuff because we don't need to most yeah. of the time is really like so amazing. You can't do your best work if, you know what I mean? Like we need 
the excellence that you provide in order for us to do our best work. So, um, so I mean, thank you so much, but it's only because of what the material we're dealing with. So true. And I don't know if you guys know, but the Emmy nominations were announced and you were nominated <laughs> twice <laughs> to, to the scripts, the only drama show. So, yeah. That's I, like, I think, like, it's kind of confirmed, like, that you're amazing, so, It's funny, because yeah. it was, I don't know how many years ago, but Bart and my um, agents, they, you know, as agents do, they're like, what do you guys want? Like, what do you want next five years to look like? What are your dreams? And uh, I think I think I said, I want to be invited to the Emmys. And they said, you mean you want to be nominated? It's like, I don't, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> I just would like to go. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up, Melanie. Um, Melanie and I spoke the day, like two hours after the nominations came out, and I know where she was when um, the nominations came out, but I'd love to hear, you know, where you guys were and what, how you celebrated. I know Melanie went to go buy a fridge, which I'll never forget that you said that to me. <laughs> what I'll never you forget get? it. I actually really want to know. Is it one of those fancy ones that tells you when you're out of stuff? No, it's uh, one that you can, it has different color panels. It's a Samsung fridge. It was supposed to come on July 20th and it's delayed. <laughs> so it's going to be, it's coming on September 15th. So I'm like, it's my oh, consolation wow. prize. Like, <laughs> get the fridge after the Emmys. I'll be like, oh, well. <laughs> Christina, where were you when you found out about the nomination? I was asleep. Um, I have an eight-month-old child. It was my turn with the teething baby. Um, and um, Well, basically, actually, my husband said, I will take the baby tonight. You have Emmy nominations being announced tomorrow. And I was like, I won't be able to sleep anyway. So, But then she woke up every 40 minutes. So at 5 a.m., I was like, take this child. I'm going to sleep. And then he, uh, my lovely husband, Mark, tried to wake me up at 5 a.m. He was like, oh, no, 8 a.m. He was like, baby, baby, they're going to be, it's a half hour. And I was like, I, I need to sleep. So I woke up at 9 to tons of calls and texts. And one of the first ones from, was from this wonderful human being over here. Um, and, but I realized I didn't know you did that we're supposed to do phone interviews afterwards. And I missed them all. But it's OK. It was great. It was fine. <laughs> Melanie, do you want to tell the lovely crowd what or uh, what you were doing when you found out? I was doing a similar thing. I was also sleeping because when you have little children, you sleep whenever you can. And I also have a hero of a husband who got up with her that morning. Um, but then something woke me up and I looked and I had texts on my phone. I was like, either I'm going to wake up naturally and there'll be no texts on my phone. And I'll be like, well, I got a good sleep or... <laughs> There's going to be, you know, and it was an exciting way to wake up. That's how I felt, too. I yeah. was like, it's not like they're not going to tell me. Yeah, so like someone's going to tell you. Either there'll be lots of notifications or <laughs> there'll be nothing. Exactly. And I was like, I was so excited. And then when I saw that Christina was nominated, I was like, Christina, <laughs> like, you can ask Jason. I like lost it. I was so happy. It was a really exciting morning. <laughs> Karen, what about you? Um, I was on vacation in a place that didn't have great internet connection, so I was actually just not paying any attention at all, and then I got my phone, some people were like, congrats about Yellow Jackets, and I was just like, thank you, I love the show too, <laughs> and I just kept writing back, and then I was like, what, and then finally I was like, to my publicist, which is a kind of very bourgeois thing to just have to say. But I just was like, why are you texting me? And she's like, you got nominated. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so great. So it was a great way to learn in kind of total blindness and ignorance. It was really fun. Um, I don't say this to be cool because it was actually because of a lot of fear, but I forgot about uh, the nominations coming out because we were... Um, but like it's only because uh, like uh, we were uh, kind of writing for a few days beforehand, and I um, I have I don't have a great kind of relationship with writing, um, and so it was just like a couple days of just like trying to figure out like if it could sort of like just move away and like become like a farmer or like you know it was just it was just really just like it felt like it wasn't going great, and so just like in that sort of like collapse had just like forgotten about this, and then I, I, I kind of rolled over and saw. Uh, 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 kind of Ashley 
And she was like, I think we got nominated. Um, and I said like, oh, for one, she's like, I don't know. People just keep saying congratulations. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I, I had not forgotten, but in a bad way, because as Bart said, we were, we've been working very diligently on scripts for season two. Um, despite what he's saying, they are going well. <laughs> we oh, just, yeah, no, yes, writing yes, is no, terrifying, yeah. you guys. So yeah. it's all we always think it's, you know, it's it's a whole thing. But I remember we were we were up pretty late, and then we were finally trying to shut it down and get some sleep. And it was like 3 a.m. And then my brain went, tomorrow's the Emmy nomination. So I went, fuck. <laughs> now I'm never gonna sleep. I think I fell asleep at like 6:30. And um, and then I woke up when our lovely executive producer, Drew Cummins, who's standing right there. Uh, <laughs> I guess my um, my note, my silence notifications had finally gone off. And so I woke up to my little sleep mask going incoming call, incoming. call, <laughs> And I saw that Drew had called 10 times and I was like, oh, that's probably a good sign. And uh, thus the weirdest day of our life began. <laughs> We also did not know that you had to do a, a kind of interviews and it was just like, oh, wow, this is like, yeah. I guess we're not working on scripts today. Yeah. <laughs> it is a crazy morning. I can attest to that. Yeah. Um, Christina, Melanie, I'd love to know what your most challenging scene was of season one. <laughs> so the second episode of the season uh, was a very heavy, misty episode after the pilot where I only had one scene. And I found Misty doing things that I was just like, oh, weird. Wow, it's so, wow, I would never, wow. All right, so dating. Um, I had to like really wrap my head around that and figure out a way in and figure out how it's gonna work. And I think it was just a bit of a, it was a second. And I think too, I have heard this a lot from people that first seasons are about finding things. And that, uh, that, you know, I hadn't really found exactly who she was, I don't think, yet. And so that was a difficult... That The dating scene itself for me was very difficult. Not, like, difficult, like, I can't do it, but just, like, trying to wrap my head around how she would be coming at this in a way that made sense for me. Um, just because with her, I just feel the need to always ground it in something very real and banal. Or, or not banal, but at least real. So that was difficult for me, um, but I worked it out. <laughs> Can I just interject and say that in the Zoom table read of that particular scene, I was crying because I felt like, oh my God, it, what's going to happen is so magic. And even if you were still finding it, it was just really amazing to see the facility you had with it. It was really, Thank you. truly, no, truly a pleasure. Yeah, I felt very blind. <laughs> you know, I, I think what was interesting is you got to what our intention when we wrote the scene was, which oh, is- good, so is, I was right? You were right. Okay, because everybody told me I was wrong that no, whole time. No, because what we always The whole time we about, were shooting it, I was like, no, I think that's no, what it is. No, and they no, were like, no, 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 it's not. Because it was, you know, to our minds- Yes, it is. But to our minds, Misty is someone who's really just looking for- connection so it while she was sort of putting on this facade of sexuality because that's what she believes is what facilitates connection it's very unnatural for her and I think that you played that so beautifully because you know everything about Misty is just a tiny bit wrong you know just she just can't quite figure it out and I think that that's what that scene was really about was her yearning to really truly connect with someone and just not being able to do so. Yeah, and I think too for sometimes with Misty is that with human nature, uh, you can get to a place where you're no, you're like, I'm not doing that anymore. Like I know better, I'm never gonna do it, but your compulsion is just to keep doing it, uh, to keep trying to make, to connect with people, to tr keep trying to grab and hold people. And sometimes I think that's difficult to play the compulsive nature while you're still this person who has evolved past that need. So I guess that for me with Misty was what was difficult in those scenes. Something you said in the cover story, which if you guys haven't read, uh, you should read it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you said something so interesting about your character and you might have to like remind me exactly of the quote, but Misty isn't someone you'd look at and be like, you know, oh my God, she's this 
powerful presence. Um, um, I probably said that she, she is not a person who has any social currency. And this is a person who has learned to um, mechanize and weaponize the things that would be seen as... Uh, as uh, negative socially. So she c cultivates this appearance of being completely innocuous, um, invisible when she wants to be, um, doe-eyed and like chipper and just like maybe annoying, but that's it, you know? <laughs> so I think that's like, uh, that was probably what I said. But I also think that we were talking about well, costume and wardrobe, but I was saying I wanted her always to be somebody that like you'd probably seen that kind of person before. You weren't terrified, but you also knew better than to make friends with her. And that's what I wanted her to evoke when you saw her. It's like, oh, I know that lady. There's a reason we don't talk to her at break. Good point. I know we have to wrap up soon, but I'd love to, you know, kind of talk about how the, sh the season ended a few questions were left unanswered, but what what can we expect for season two? You just said you were writing it, so give us something. This always feels like a trick. <laughs> just FYI, our, our wonderful colleagues at Showtime are here, so I'll get in actual trouble immediately if I give away too much. I mean, you know, I think that we've talked about the fact that, you know, season two for the, the wilderness storyline is very much their first winter and um, all the challenges that you can imagine go along with that. I think we've called it the winter of their discontent. And then in the present day storyline, you know, they've, they've uh, dug themselves some holes and uh, that's going to be an issue. I know. Don't give me that look. <laughs> I'm trying to get clues because I don't, you haven't let me read anything. And, I understand. You know, I, I think we, we strongly imply that there may be a new, um, you know, a new person coming back. I know. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> we may be seeing, you know, some new dynamics and there may be, you know, a, another survivor um, coming back into the mix. And I don't know how much more I'm allowed to say. <laughs> I think that was great. Um, I think you hyped it, but it's not like you didn't commit to anything. That was great. Yeah. We'll take that. We'll take it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This was amazing. Yeah.